Kristen Soltis Anderson, columnist for the Washington Examiner, Republican pollster, and author of the book The Selfie Vote, and Matt Slap, chairman of the American Conservative Union and former White House political director for President George W. Bush. And good day to both of you. Um, Great to be here. I guess it's my sense, Kristen, that what Paul Ryan's fighting for is to make sure Republicans maintain the majority in the House. How do you see this right now as he's talking? That's Paul Ryan's number one objective. You know, the presidential is sort of happening uh, in, in a separate universe from what he needs to do in the House. And he's, he's frustrated because I think he's worried that a lot of he talks about wanting to achieve may not necessarily be high on Donald Trump's agenda. And frankly, you know, some of the polls that have come out in the last few days are making it seem like Donald Trump might threaten that Republican House majority. So, you know, right now, Paul Ryan is sort of trying to engage in this long term battle. Can we preserve a conservative, free market, liberty oriented agenda in a world where a lot of voters are confused? They just want to have a government that keeps them safe. They're not necessarily focused on Congress. They're focused on this presidential so, race uh, Matt, what, the headlines. Got it. What, what about the initial observation? I mean, Paul Ryan wants to be speaker in 2017. Right. Well, yeah, he wants to be speaker, although it's a job he sought reluctantly. I think this is very typical of leaders uh, in, in Congress. You know, their number one goal is to hold their majorities. And I do think Paul's motivated by that. I think the speaker is. But I think, actually, I disagree with Kristen a bit. Some of the polling that I'm seeing in these battleground House seats actually show that Trump is doing much better than people expected. And on the Senate side, he's doing very well in states like Ohio and, and in a state like Pennsylvania. And those incumbents seem to be heading uh, in a good place for reelection. So I actually think the Trump effect on the congressional races, uh, the fact that it would have a negative effect was much hyped. I don't think it's going to turn out to be true. And what Paul Ryan and Donald Trump need to realize is they need each other. Paul Ryan is a leader on, on, a, on, on policy and thinking about the types of positions we should take as a party. But Donald Trump speaks to a lot of voters that Paul Ryan can't reach. If they could find a way to work together, it's a powerful coalition. But Matt, when you talk about Ohio, you're talking about Rob Portman, right? And yeah, the, yeah. The polling suggests that Portman's doing all right. That's right. I'm saying I'm saying I'm saying the Trump effect actually on these key races, both in the House and the Senate, is much more beneficial than all the hype that said that Trump was going to risk these Republican majorities in the House and the Senate. Now, it's case by case, but it's much more positive than negative from the polling. I well, see. Why do you think that I, is, Matt? Kristen, hang on one second. I, I think that he's speaking. Look, in Ohio and Pennsylvania, let me take those. Okay. He is speaking to these voters who feel like their economic security is threatened. They haven't seen their wages go up. They might be unemployed. They might be a coal worker or a manufacturing worker that's been displaced. He is speaking to those voters, and it's voters that the Republican Party has had a little trouble with. Kristen, go ahead. Uh, there are a lot of polls that I'm seeing where you've got somebody like a Rob Portman in Ohio who's doing okay, but it's in part because he's overperforming where Trump's numbers are by a little bit. And what concerns me is that you're going to have hundreds of millions of dollars spent on the airwaves over the next couple of months trying to take the things that Donald Trump has said and done that are not necessarily the things that are appealing to those voters, not the things where he's talking about economy and jobs, but the things that are a little more offensive. And Democrats are going to try to say that the Rob Portmans and the Pat Toomeys of the world are responsible responsible for those comments. That's what makes me nervous. What's wrong about with November. that, Matt? It's, it's not going to work. Look, we, we, this, is the, this is the fear that people talk about, which is all the negatives of Trump will go down to these congressional candidates. Look, Donald Trump is a very unique candidate and obviously a very unique presidential candidate. I believe that a lot of these candidates are going to get the good of these voters who are going to come out and vote for Trump, even if they haven't been voting Republican. And they're not going to have to take all the bad because they don't have to agree with Donald Trump on everything. And I think the fact that Pat Toomey's and Rob Portman's numbers are as good as they are, and those are just two examples, demonstrate that I think Republicans can win at the same time that Donald Trump is successful at, on the presidential level. It's an interesting analysis. Oh, to both of you then, when Ryan talks about fighting uh, for the soul of our party, is it that dire, Kristen? What Paul Ryan really stands for, you know, and has always been uh, steeped in is this sort of liberty infused, limited government uh, type of conservatism. And what's been kind of disorienting for, for folks like him uh, in this election is that we're discovering an awful lot of Republican voters don't necessarily wake up in the morning and, and wonder, is the government getting too big? They just want to know, am, is my job safe? Is the economy getting better? Is my family safe?
Donald Trump has been much less ideological. He's tapped into a lot of emotions that voters are feeling that are less tethered to, you know, free markets and liberty. And what Paul Ryan is saying is, well, look, our party's still got to be about free markets and liberty. And some of the things that Trump has said on issues like trade may emotionally resonate with a lot of Republican voters, but are at odds ideologically with where someone I've, like Paul Ryan okay, is. I've got to run. Five seconds, Matt. Can you do it or not? <laughs> Basically, I think Paul Ryan is saying something interesting, but he said it in front of 400 billionaires. Donald Trump's talking to the average American. And we got to realize that's the person we need to appeal All to. Right, thanks to both of you, Matt and Chris.